got us a big Manitowoc here that says in full, but it's not full. I have it in angling that it's probably a damper. So get out the screwdriver here. Okay, the door comes off and this is what I find. That can cause a problem. That's holding the door open. And that is completely jacked up. It's been fixed, so to speak. What made the door fall out is what I want to know. And there she goes. I would bet anything this got caught in the ice and it yanked it out of place. So they really need a new one. And this is kind of important. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing is I'll go ahead and temporarily fix it like they did here with the zip screw. And uh, otherwise you tend to lose your water. The, uh, some of these sometimes will stick on you. But it seems like it's pretty free. Going into a harvest. Uh, be nice if the keypad would work. Uh, that's not good. Something's wrong with my keypad. Okay, system doesn't want to behave. I'll put her to sleep because trying to get to the power plug is probably not going to be too easy. Back together. Let's see if she restarts normal. Boy, she didn't even delay. Holy mackerel. High pressure cutout. They do have something called sulfur water. I mean, they have sulfur gas in it. And you can see how badly it eats the pipes up. Looks like you've been brazing on them. And that can cause a lot of issues with your electronics. It can cause refrigerant leaks. It's quite a nasty thing to have. They did buy a nice water system to take care of it, but. Uh, yeah, well, probably the reason why it went to high pressure cutout because that's probably some of the other safety devices in there with it. So, looks like ice is there. There we go. Come on. Well, that ain't good. It's, the breaker didn't seem like it clicked normal. It feels really icky. It does not sound good. Yeah, we've got some problems here, that's for sure. Yeah, we're not, voltage is not there. All right, took that keypad out. This is my backup one. Now it works. Acknowledge it. Current switch is closed. Open it. That's what I'm doing there. So it's responding like it should. Uh, low pressure cutouts closed. High pressure cutouts closed. So they're all closed. Okay, run the board through a self check. Enable relays. They all look like they came on. Turned them off. Exit. I need to come back and do a cleaning on this too. So now she's going to go into her freeze down. This is where we try to get the plate cold enough before we bring the water on. And that's going to set up, make sure our clock's set right. Nothing worse than having bad dates and times. I think what we got to do here is we got to get this thing fixed up. Otherwise you might lose some of your water over the front. Um, likely what's going on with this is the keypad here is bad. And you can replace just the keypad and not the control board which is a lot cheaper than a whole control board. So we'll order that. Let's see what our temperatures are doing. We're on about 102. Discharge gas, which I'm pretty sure. I gotta look and see what that T2 is. It's different with different models. Usually it's hot gas, liquid, and top and bottom evaporator. Okay, I went ahead and put four screws in there to get them by. Um, that's going to keep it from sagging in the middle. Basically what happened was originally it was probably just loose here. 
and then next thing you know it just started letting loose that should retract the way it's supposed to yeah it might be our hot gas 135 25 and 28 that's our evaporator so this is a single evaporator system so i believe this one's going to stay pretty pretty accurate to the usual smaller units generally you want less than a seven degree delta t across your evaporator on the back of this here you'll have a thermistor at the top and a thermistor at the bottom and the theory behind that is if you don't have enough refrigerant in there you'll easily warm the coil up with the water but if you have enough refrigerant in there you're not going to warm it up so therefore your temperature drop would not be as great low on charge large temperature drop correct charge it'll be usually seven or less but that's just the rule of thumb i mean give or take a few degrees now by not having this curtain on here and this door off the heat can cause this thing to slush and what can happen is the slush will build up down below here to trick out your water sensor and then basically it starves itself of water because it doesn't know to add water because ice is on the sensor making it think hey i'm full of water when i'm not so that's why it's important to have this curtain up here and to have the door on all right our condenser's out here feel some heat on it take a look at our coil it looks fairly clean coming in hot Condensing into a liquid, going back on the small one. Got your headmaster control right there. It's set up for 225, it looks like. All right, so far so good. Things are looking pretty decent. Checking our frequencies out there. Usually she'll get a ground uh, floor for what the frequency is at the starting point. And then as it gets closer and closer to the microphone, which is inside the ice thickness sensor there the frequency will start to change and we're almost getting there so this thing makes ice in a hurry this is a uh, I think a 1600 Getting really close up there I'm gonna take a peek at your pattern here I'll tell you what this thing's gonna be going into harvest real quick here so let's watch the frequency here. We're gonna start jumping up into the high thousands. There it goes. I knew we wouldn't get that off. What I wanted to look at was to see if my evaporator plate was freezing uniformly all the way down to the bottom. And then here's where I usually start my stopwatch. And I wanna see this thing drop generally in less than a minute and a half, two minutes max usually. The old rule of thumb for the smaller, older machines used to be three and a half. This one here, the Indigo. I think they have another type of algorithm, but originally they wanted three and a half minutes or less. Otherwise, uh, it could lock out. So we'll see how she drops here. Um, one thing to keep in mind, when a ice machine is low on refrigerant, you're gonna have problems uh, harvesting. You would think that you'd have problems freezing, but quite the opposite, your problem is harvest. It takes more hot gas to get that plate hot and melt that ice off so it falls uh, than it does to freeze it. And uh, this also has little air compressors at the back. And I think she's getting ready to throw off the iron or something. Good deal. So, come down to here. Grab your ice, see what your bridge thickness is. Usually you want it right around an uh, eighth of an inch. Which it's probably close to, maybe a little touch over it. But that's... Uh, basically pretty much dead on the money so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this here so that they can control it um, the other controllers obviously acting stupid and um, we're gonna go ahead and order a new uh, shield and then I'm uh, gonna get them a new square D breaker that uh, like I said that keypad comes just as a shell you'll get that whole shell right there and then you just take the guts out of it and plug it into it. Got it all back together. You know, guys, the best way to learn these things is just doing maintenance on these. Um, you know, when I first started working on them, I just knew the basics about it. But when you're sitting there doing the service on them over and over and over and over again, and you're spending, you know, a couple hours cleaning them, you learn how they operate. That gives you time to go into the control and learn its characteristics. You see what it does when it's working right, so it makes it a lot easier when it's not working right. 
So you can just go into your diagnostics and you can look at uh, your temp sensors. Temps are going to tell you a lot of things here. I don't need to put my gauges on this thing by just looking at my temperatures. You know, it's just like a geothermal. You check your temps and if it's working right, then no need to put the gauges on there unless you can uh, find any other good reason to do it. I mean, you can get away with it, but the less you do it, the better off you are. We're going to go into errors again, event log. I'm going to clear the log and that way when I come back, if it has any problems, it's going to show me that there's been some weirdo things going on. So we got everything back into position and that's going to wrap this one up. If you guys like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Be sure to leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to check down in the notes section, list to the tools that I use in my videos. It's all listed in there in kits. So if you guys are interested in whatever it is I use, there's links down there to Amazon. It helps support the channel and you still pay the same rate that you would if you bought it directly off Amazon. So until next time, we'll catch you on the next one.